Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel and today we are going to be talking about one of the most important but in some cases overlooked parts of a home security or defense plan and that is doing everything in your power to make sure that a bad guy never even gets through your door but if they do you want to ensure that you have enough reaction time that you can deal with that threat in the most effective way that puts you at as little risk as possible. Now one thing I don't want is people to be confused as to whether or not I am a supporter of armed self-defense because I am. I grew up around guns. I was probably the youngest person in my license to carry class back in 2008. So that's something I'm very familiar with. It's something that I support very strongly, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good your weapons are, how much training you have, if you wake up in the middle of the night and there's already somebody at the foot of your bed. So you wanna set up your home security and defense plan so that that never happens. Every good security plan, whether it's for your home, for your church, or even if you're in the military or law enforcement, all of those plans are gonna have layers. That allows you to know if there's a problem coming your way and take action to deal with that problem. And the first layer of your home security plan should be knowing what is going on in your neighborhood. There are several different ways to do that. Since we live in a more high-tech world, there's resources like nextdoor.com, which is a website and an app that you can use to communicate with members of your community to let folks know if there's like rashes of vehicle burglaries or home invasions or other things going on that you might need to know about. Also, if you have something like a ring camera, I know that there is a similar online community for folks who own those devices. And then also more low tech things you should know your neighbors. If there's a neighbor that you have not talked to, then you should strike up a conversation with that person. It's also important to know the neighbors that you can talk to and you can trust and the ones that you can't. The folks that you can trust, they're the ones that you wanna let know, hey, I'm gonna go on vacation, would you mind keeping an eye on things? But Mr. Blabbermouth, and there's one on my street, I'm not going to tell him, Jack, I don't want him knowing that I'm gone because he's just going to publish it everywhere and then put my home at risk. So know who you can trust, who you can't trust. And then also, if there's things like community barbecues or maybe a community security meeting, or those are probably things that you want to consider taking part in. The next layer of your home security plan should be your yard. You want to make your home and your property as unappealing to criminals as you possibly can. And one of the most simple ways to do that is to keep your yard well kept. You don't want your yard and the outside of your home to look like a place where somebody could go into, spend a whole lot of time, and nobody would care. And also, if your yard is unkempt, that might make somebody think that maybe you're not home a whole lot, so it could be an easy target. Then also, you want to keep shrubs and other types of vegetation trimmed back or, in some cases, eliminated, especially near things like windows. You don't want to give somebody any cover that they could hide behind while they're trying to gain entry into your home. Then also, having adequate lighting is important, and motion sensor lights are a great way to go about doing this. The second that somebody steps into one of those beams and that light can on, then they know that they have been caught. And then if you have gates leading from maybe your front yard to your backyard, you want to keep those locked also. If you have a garage, a very good way to make it difficult for people to tell whether you're home or not is to use that garage to park your car in. If you have your cars parked outside of your garage, it's going to be very easy for people to tell whether you're home or not. And obviously garage doors without windows, those are preferable, but there's always ways that you can cover up windows on garage doors to make them more difficult or impossible to see through. And even if you don't have things like security systems or dogs, it's still a good idea to have evidence of those things like maybe you actually do. So even if you don't have a home security system, there's nothing that says that you cannot get a sign for your yard that says that you do. Even if you don't have dogs, there's nothing against the law about putting a large dog bowl and bone next to your door to make somebody think that you do have those things so they might think twice about picking your home. It's not foolproof, 
but it could deter at least some criminals. Then there's also more high-tech ways of keeping your property secure. Things like cameras, they're easier to install and use than they ever have been, even though things like ring cameras might not be useful in a more long-term situation, they would still be useful in everyday life before something like that happens, and they're pretty cheap. If you're wanting something more long term, then of course you can invest in a closed circuit camera system, but you would need some way to power that. Then a good alternative to cameras are going to be battery operated motion sensors. The set that I have is made by Guardline. I picked it up probably about a month or two ago, and the sensors run on just regular AA batteries. The receiver has a AAA battery backup that can be used if for some reason the power goes out or if you are dealing with a more long-term grid down type situation. I'm using rechargeable Inolute batteries in those which can be recharged using one of my solar power systems. The set that I have has a 500 foot range but if you have larger property, more ground to cover, they do make a quarter mile system as well. And while it was designed mainly to detect vehicles, it will pick up people also. The sensors themselves will install pretty much on any flat surface, whether it's a tree, a fence. Then it also gives you masonry anchors that you can use to install the sensors in either a brick or concrete wall. And they've done a pretty good job weatherproofing those devices. It comes with a sunshade that in addition to helping protect the sensor from direct sunlight, it also helps prevent water from getting inside of it. And they have a gasket which prevents water from getting in also. And one thing I like about these sensors is that you can expand your system to accommodate up to 16 sensors with four different zones. And you can set up each zone so where it has its own unique sound or chime so that if, you know, maybe you hear beep beep, you know that somebody's driving by your house or you hear ding dong, you know somebody's coming up the front door. So you know kind of where potential movement or potential threat is so that you can take action accordingly. And these sensors don't rely on cellular networks or Wi-Fi to run. So even if there was some sort of situation where all of those services were to be put out of use, then you would still have access to these motion sensors to keep things like entrances to your property, your yard, and even your home covered. The next layer to your home security or defense plan should be the actual entrances to your home. You want to make those as difficult as possible for somebody to get through, and it starts off easy. Just make sure that your doors and your windows are locked. An obscene amount of home invasions and burglaries happen because somebody was just able to walk through the front door. So after this video, go around, make sure all of your windows are latched, make sure your door's locked, make sure that before you leave the house, you double check to make sure that both the knob and the deadbolt are locked all the way. Then also make sure your garage door is shut. I am just amazed when I go around my neighborhood how many people have their garage doors wide open. You can see all of their tools, all of their stuff in there, and somebody could just walk in and get it. And a even bigger problem is when that garage is actually attached to their home. Now, sometimes you have an exterior type door that leads from the garage to the home, but other times they might just be interior doors. I don't know how all the codes for that work. Maybe nowadays new builds have to have an exterior door leading from the garage to the rest of the home, but older homes might not. So you want to make sure that A, the garage door is down, and B, you want to make sure that you have an exterior rated door between your attached garage and the rest of your home just so if somebody is able to get into that garage then it's going to be difficult for them to breach that next door. And in addition to keeping your garage door shut you want to make sure that people cannot easily gain entry to your garage using simple tools. One common way that people enter in through a garage is by using something like a bent clothes hanger to fish their way through the top of the garage door, grab a hold of the little, uh, little pull rope that disengages the garage door from the track. So if there's a power outage or the door shuts on somebody, you can lift it up real easy. They just use that to disengage that mechanism and then lift the door right up. So while maybe you don't want to completely remove that rope in case there is an accident and you need to disengage that door from its track, Maybe just remove that plastic part on the end 
so that it's going to be more difficult for somebody to get a hold of. And they also make security devices that you can install on the arm of your garage door to prevent somebody from reaching through with a clothes hanger and grabbing a hold of that. And if you are able to afford things like cameras and motion sensors, then you definitely want to have those covering your doors and other primary entrances to your home. So when it comes to making your home physically more difficult to break into, a door reinforcement kit is a good place to start if you're not familiar with those. They basically consist of a super long strike plate and very long screws that go all the way into the studs of the door frame, making the door harder to kick in. The reinforcement kit that I have is made by Armor Concepts, and in addition to having that super long strike plate, it also has other pieces of hardware that help reinforce the door as well as the hinges on the other side of the door. And even if you can't afford a full door reinforcement kit, one very easy and cheap thing that you can do is go to the hardware store, buy either three and a half inch or four inch deck screws, remove the screws that are holding your strike plate in place right now, and replace them with those longer screws because they will reach all the way into the stud making the door much harder to kick in. And while it might not stop somebody from actually gaining entry to your home, it'll give you a lot more reaction time if somebody does try to do that. When it comes to the actual locking mechanisms on your doors, you always want to make sure that you have a deadbolt. The little knob locks, they're really not worth much at all. They're super easy to shim with a credit card. I can't even remember all the times that I've done it for various reasons that weren't illegal. Point is, it's super easy to do, especially if a door is loose or it doesn't have weather stripping on the exterior of the door. If somebody knows what they're doing, they can actually shim a door faster than you could unlock it with the key. But if you have a deadbolt, they're either going to have to pick the lock or kick it in. When it comes to windows, if you have the funds, then you can always pick up window film, which will make it a lot harder to shatter that window. Now the window will still break, but it won't just shatter in pieces, which could give you that additional reaction time. One area that a lot of people overlook when it comes to securing their home is pet doors, especially the larger ones. There was a situation a couple years ago where I was outside in the backyard practicing my crossbow and my wife went out for a walk. She locked all the doors and forgot the keys and I didn't have anything on me because I was just in the backyard. And I was able to very easily just pop out that little panel that covers the doggy door, reach through and unlock both the deadbolt and the knob lock. And I mean, it, it probably took me less than a minute. So I know that if somebody like me who has not had any experience doing that, I mean, I'm not some sort of burglar or home invader. If somebody like me could do it that easily, then I know somebody who has practice would be able to do it even quicker. So what I went ahead and did is I purchased them three quarter inch plywood and bolted that to the front of the pet door. Now, of course, somebody, if they had the right tools, could just undo that. But I mean, it'd probably be easier just to kick the door in. But if you're worried about that, then of course you can always round off the edges if you're using some sort of like, you know, bolt hardware or just kind of drill out where the, where the screws go if you're worried about somebody undoing that. Then also alarm and security systems are good to have. And if you're worried about a more long-term situation or maybe you just don't have the money to pay month by month for a security plan, then you can always pick up those little magnetic door and window sensors. They're cheap and they would continue to work in a long-term grid down situation provided you were able to keep batteries in them. And y'all, it's really important to understand that even if you do all of these things, there's still a chance that somebody might try to break into your home and they might actually get inside of your home. So it's still important to know what you're going to do in a situation like that and have the training and the equipment that you need to back up those actions. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Y'all have a good and thanks again.